Oh, welcome back. Oh, welcome back. Oh, welcome back. Once again, oh, welcome back. Tell a friend. <laughs> welcome back. Oh, welcome back. Oh, welcome back to the channel. everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video we are going to be doing a sew along for one of the dresses for battle of the shirt dress this is dress number two in the battle of the shirt dress I know you guys thought that I forgot but no I am still sewing two more shirt dresses as part of battle of the shirt dress that I introduced during the springtime back in March. So I still have two more dresses to go. So I did do a pattern review and the first shirt dress was Butterick 6702. And now dress number two is McCall's 8031. Now, before I get started, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into a quick pattern review before we get on over to the sew along. And then also remember, I will be putting chapters in so you could jump to whatever portion you want to jump to. If you do not want to hear the pattern review and go straight over to the sew along, you can do that as well. All right, so now without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into the pattern description. So the pattern description for this pattern is a Mrs. Dress with three sleeve lengths. The dress has a button front, a back yoke, a side seam pocket, and a tie belt. And then for view B, you had you have your side hemline slit, and then view C has the patch pockets and shirt tail hemline. Now that is the pattern review for this pattern. Let's go ahead and talk about the skill level. So the skill level for this pattern is, I believe it's rated as a level three, easy to sew or learn to sew pattern on the Something Delightful website and also on the pattern. What that means, what I think that means would be your intermediate beginners because you need to learn how to do buttons, buttonholes, put on collars and stuff of that sort. So I would agree with this. I wouldn't say that it's a level three. I would say it's a level two being that it is a intermediate beginner. So that is the skill level that I would say for this pattern. Let's go ahead and get into the notions used. So for this pattern, the notions used, now I did view A. So on the back of the pattern, it will tell you that for view A, you need eight five eight inch buttons. However, because I made a modification, which I will get to here shortly, I used a total of 16 buttons, okay? 16 five eight inch buttons is what I did for <laughs> this shirt dress, all right? Now let's go ahead and get into fabric use. So the fabric used for this um, shirt dress was 100% Ankara print. And I did a um, fabric haul on all the Ankara prints that I did that I picked up way back in July, I believe, of 2020 during Ankara Appreciation Week. So this fabric came from House of Mommy Wata. However, I'm pretty sure she does not have this fabric available. I have not looked before um, doing this pattern review, but I remember that a few of you asked me what was the name of this fabric when I picked it up last year. Well, not last year, the year before. Maybe it was July 2021. I'll put, a, um, I'll put it in the end screen on the fabric haul that I did from Etsy for many different and car print um, shop owners. I'll put that in the end card, um, but it's called Nuri, N-U-R-I, and it's from House of Mommy Watton. All right, so now that I talked about the, um, pat the fabric that I use, let's talk about the pattern pieces. So for the pattern, I can't remember. I think it's a total of maybe nine pattern pieces. So you have your front, you have your back, you have your yoke, your collar, I'm sorry, your upper collar, under collar, your sleeve, 
and that's it. So it's probably about eight pattern pieces. I'll put the pattern pieces up on the screen so you're able to see that. However, I do wanna make a note with the um, pattern pieces. So I believe, and I say it in the um, sew along, pattern piece number eight. It says on the pattern piece that it's a, the under collar. It is not the under collar, it is the upper collar. So make sure you use that as your upper collar, like I say in the sew along. So I noticed that that was a mistake written on the pattern, okay? Let's talk about pattern sizing. So this pattern comes in one envelope and the sizing is extra small to extra large. The size that I cut was a large for this pattern, um, but I did have to make an adjustment for the hips. So what I did was I cut the large all the way down from the bust to the waist, which gave me extra, extra room in the waist because my waist is a 32. However, I believe the finished garment measurement for the waist was approximately 37 inches, which is a lot of ease. So, which means that I can eat more than I want to, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, but I did have to um, take, you know, basically enlarge the pattern at the hips. So for the large, I think it was a 45. My hips is a 44 and a half now. Um, so I would like to give myself two to three inches of ease. So I just went ahead and made the pattern 48 and a half inches for the hips and it gave me more than enough room. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that it gave me a good four to five inches of four to four and a half inches of ease in the hip area and I love it. Yes, it, it was enough, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about modifications. So if you guys know that the modification that I made was, and you'll see this in the so long, I use McCall 7838. Now, what I did was I sewn the dress exactly like it says the only difference is i add the tie belt which i believe you could add the tie belt for each and every view i also used the upper portion of the sleeve which is the short sleeve for view a i used that sleeve and then i took mccall 7838 and did the lower sleeve this portion right here which is the puff sleeve and the cuff from that pattern in order to create a statement sleeve and you guys know that hashtag so maxi for mother's day is going on and i'm one of the ambassadors so i will be submitting this for hashtag so maxi for mother's day you guys have until may the 9th to post your garment so do not forget to post your garment and also use the hashtag so maxi for mother's day and tag the two hosts um t from chris from I'm sorry, T from Crumpet Tea and Sewing and Crystal from Crystal Sews and Stuff. Tag both of those in your make for hashtag so maxi for Mother's Day. The last day to submit your post is May the 9th on Instagram. All right, now, did this look like the photos or drawing in the pattern, on the pattern envelope? No. <laughs> Now, normally I always say, yes, it does, but I'm gonna say absolutely not. It does not look like the photo or the drawing on the pattern envelope because of the statement sleeve. Now, if I did not do the statement sleeve, yes, it would look like the photo and the drawing on the pattern envelope, but because I wanted something different. So if you notice from dress number one, I added, um, I add some tabs and some flaps to that dress to give it some, mm, what, mm, what, mm, yeah, to that dress. So I wanted to do the same thing for dress number two and add something that gave it character because I told you guys when doing battle of the shirt dress, I just don't want a basic shirt dress. I want to make it hard for me to choose which one I like the most. So you may see something different in dress number three too. So I have not started dress number three, but it will be something different that brings a pattern from two. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? So that's what my goal is for battle of the shirt dress when I create the third and the fourth dress. All right, so let's talk about the instructions. Are the instructions easy to follow? Yes, they are easy to follow and I did follow along with the instructions as much as possible because I was doing a sew along and I needed to do this pattern review as well. 
However, the only portion on the instructions that was incorrect was, it's not actually the instructions, it was basically the pattern piece was pattern piece number eight. Other than that, the instructions are completely easy to follow. So let's talk about my likes and dislikes. So I do not have any dislikes for McCall's 8031, which is also hashtag Alexis McCall's. I don't have any dislike. However, the only dislike I would say not for McCall's 8031, it was something that I did. And it's simply because 16 buttonholes and buttons. <laughs> I did not like that. But because I wanted to take this um, dress to the next level, I did what I had to do, okay? Sometimes you have to do these things that you don't want to do. And it wasn't because I didn't want to do it. It was just basically because I wanted some mm in this shirt dress, okay? That's basically what it was. All right, let's get into my first time experiences. Did I have any first time experiences? No. <laughs> All right, because I have sewn shirt dresses. I have made statement sleeves. I have a tutorial where I did something like the lower, lower, lower portion of the sleeve and that was simplicity 9467 which i will also put on the end screen for you to see that video as well which was also a sew along with extended cuffs so the cuff is pretty much goes all the way up to your elbows it it's it's a statement okay <laughs> yes so let's talk about what i saw this uh, dress again no because i have so many shirt dress patterns that I want to do so I think one shirt dress for McCall's 8031 would be good for me however this is a good pattern so I would recommend it to others to sew as well all right um, my pattern rating so my pattern rating for this pattern is a five out of five and I also want to note that even though I'm doing a pattern review, you could also check out Talisha's video, which she did a pattern review for this same pattern. I believe she did view C with the shirt tail for hers. I maybe it was view A, the same view that I'm doing. I can't, I cannot remember, but she did hers in a plaid, and it's super, super cute. Um, but I had so many McCall patterns to choose from, and this is one of the ones that I um, decided to choose because one, it's one of the newer shirt dress patterns, and you guys know with Butterick, it was mm, it was hard to find one and make it look good. So I wanted to find something a lot easier to where I didn't have to do any drafting or too many modifications. Now for the sleeves, it was a last minute modification, which you will see in the sew along when I said I'm gonna leave the sleeves until the end because I was you know, undecided if I wanted to do a statement sleeve, if I wanted to do a short sleeve, if I wanted to do a long sleeve, if I wanted to add tabs to the sleeve or not. So it was a lot going on with that. All right, so that's it for the pattern review. I think I talked enough, so let's go ahead and end this pattern review and go straight on over to the sew along. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are doing a sew along and the sew along we are doing is for McCall's 8031, which is a learn to sew level three pattern by McCall's. Now, um, I am going to walk you through this sew along because I know for button down shirts, most of you tell me that your neck bend, your collar is not where you want it to be and all that good stuff. Now, there are um, two pattern reviews that I know of for this dress. One is done by Talisha from Creativity by T. And then the other one is done by, um, I've seen it before. I'll put it up on the screen who the other um, pattern review is from. Now, you can go to Talisha's video because I believe she did view A for her pattern review. I can't remember completely, but she, I remember she did this during the fall time for her pattern, uh, for her pattern review. So you can always go to Talisha from Creativity by T's video and see that pattern review if you are interested in her pattern review as well. 
But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into um, the pattern instructions and the items that you will need in order to construct this um, button down dress as part of the battle of the shirt dress. This is dress number two. So let's go ahead and get right on into the tools and supplies you need in order to construct this button down dress. All right, so the first, so a couple of tools and supplies you will need is your basic sewing supplies, which of course will be your pens. You will need pens. You will definitely need your pattern. Now I am using um, extra small to extra large, and that's the only size that this pattern comes in, extra small to extra large, so make sure you have that. From the back of the pattern, you will definitely need eight five eighths inch buttons if you are doing view A or B. If you are doing view C, you need 10 5 eighths of an inch buttons as well. You will definitely need your interfacing as well. Depending on the view that you will be doing, you will need to interface pattern piece number three, eight, and nine. Um, depending on, and seven, if you are doing certain different views, but make sure you check your cut layout, which we will cover here shortly. You will also need a disappearing ink marker um, to mark your dots. You will need your, of course, scissors, like I just mentioned, to clip into your dots. You will need a white pencil if you are using a darker fabric. Um, you will also need uh, rotary cutters. I use rotary cutters at the um, to cut my fabric and my paper. I do not use scissors. I use my scissor thread clippers at the sewing machine. All right. Now that's all the supplies that you will need in order to um, construct this dress. So let's go ahead and get right on into the instructions that you will um, be following along to, or I will be following along to in this sew along. All right. So let's go ahead and cover the pattern instructions for this pattern before we go ahead and start sewing. I'll cover the pattern pieces here shortly, but make sure you transfer all your dots, your markings, and all that good stuff before you start um, constructing your item. Now, the first thing I wanna do is draw your attention to the cutting layout. I am using 45 inch fabric. So this is the cutting layout that I will be using right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and circle it. And the 45 inch is for all view, all sizes, I'm sorry, all sizes, whether you're cutting an extra small or an extra large, the cutting layout is the same if you're using 45 inch fabric. Also, I wanna draw your attention to, if you are using 45 inch fabric, you need to make sure that pattern piece number six, seven, and nine is cut with the right side of your pattern piece and laying down on your fabric, you're going to cut around. But if you take note of your interfacing, when you interface pattern piece number nine, the right side of your, um, Fab the right side of your pattern piece should be facing up on the interfacing. So make sure you are really looking at these cutting layouts because you don't wanna do what I did for my Easter dress and decide that, oh well, it's the same on both sides, but then when you go to constructing it, you have to recut. So I'm trying to save you those problems like I had, okay? The seam allowance for this dress will be 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Also make note of the sewing information fabric key. You need to make sure you are familiar with that as well. Also, everything you might, you will definitely want to pin all of your notches. Um, whenever you have a notch, pin at your notch all the way down. Make sure you press. Now for me, I will be using my serger and I will be pressing. I will be pressing using my seam roll for things like my uh, shoulder seams, my side seam. I always use my seam roll and I use my pressing ham when I am pressing my sleeve. So make sure you get in the habit of using your um, seam roll and a pressing cloth. Now the pressing cloth that I am using is just some old scrap fabric and I just literally press like that, okay? So just make sure you are using these two items when you are pressing your seams. You don't wanna just press it and then you accidentally burn your fabric. You don't wanna do that as well, all right? So um, another thing, I'm not gonna walk you through the steps because we will be doing the steps um, like you see, but a couple of things I do wanna draw your attention to is if you want bus pockets, which is what you see in view, I believe is view C. 
If you want that, you will have to follow along with the instructions um, starting at step number four and then go all the way to step number 14. I will not be doing step four through 14 because I do not want the flaps on my bus or pockets on my bus because I did that in the previous um, video. I didn't do a sew along, but I did that in my first battle of the shirt dress dress. So this one, I don't want flaps in pockets, okay? Um, so I will be doing step number one through three and then start at step number 15, constructing the back. 16, construct the yoke then attach the front to the back at the shoulder seam. I will definitely be adding my pockets before even doing the back. So that portion, 18 and 19, will also be a little different, all right? I will sew my side seam. Now, I will sew my side seam once I insert my sleeve. So step number 20 and 20, 21 and 22 will be a little different of how I do mine. If you wanna follow along with the steps, you can uh, do that. I will be doing my collar. Now for the collar, I do my collar a little different than what's in the instructions. So just make sure that some of these instructions will be a little different than what's in my sew along, okay? I like to make things a little easier than what the pattern is actually, or the pattern instructions is actually telling you to do. I will be using a belt. So I will be doing belt for mine as well, which the belt is, the fabric belt is, I believe, step number 63. I'm sorry, right here, six, uh, after 65, you have the belt. I will be doing that one through three. And then back over to the finishing, I will not be doing a long sleeve. I'm debating on the sleeve. I have not cut out my sleeve simply because I plan on doing the top portion of my sleeve. I wanna show you this so you don't get confused. I'm gonna move the instructions out of the way. I plan on using the sleeve from McCall's 8031, but I also want to just take the sleeve and then after making that short sleeve to the elbow, I want to extend it and have like that uh, nice flowy cuff sleeve. So that's what I'm thinking about doing, um, but I'm not sure yet. Now this is McCall 7838 if you want to do this same sleeve that I'm doing, um, but that's the plan. I have not cut out my sleeve because it all depends on if I could get eight more buttons with the buttons that I want to use. That's what it depends on, okay? If I cannot get the buttons from Joann's um, when I go later on today, then I will be stuck with just making a short sleeve, um, a short sleeve sleeve for this pattern, okay? So when we get to the sleeve, I'll let you know what I will be doing, okay? So now without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing of McCall's 8031. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this uh, shirt dress. So I have all of my pattern pieces cut out. Um, the first pattern piece I wanna show you will not be with fabric or interfacing. This is just your buttonhole guide, okay? So after everything is put together, you will use this to mark your buttonhole. So this is pattern piece number 12, which is your buttonhole guide. You do not cut this out of fabric or interfacing. It's just a guide for your buttonholes, okay? So you will definitely need that piece for your um, shirt dress. The next pattern that you will need is pattern piece number one. Now you need to cut two, this is your front, you need to cut two of fabric. Make sure you mark your um, dart as well, front and back, and make sure you transfer that as well. So that's pattern piece number one. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four. You will need the back, of course. And the back is cut on the fold of fabric. Once again, this is pattern piece number four. Pattern piece number six is your pockets. You need to cut four of fabric. Now make sure if you want pockets, cut four. If you do not want pockets, you can omit the pockets as well. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number seven, which is your under collar. This pattern piece, you need to place down on the fabric when you cut out your fabric, you need to place this down on the fabric and cut all the way around. However, when you cut this up interfacing, it needs to be up 
on the interfacing and then cut all the way around. It will make sense once you do it, okay? <laughs> but this is pattern piece number seven, which is your under collar. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number eight, which is your under collar. So let me go back. Now, there is a discrepancy because pattern piece number seven states that this is your under collar. And then pattern piece number eight says that it's your under collar too. Now, I'm going to go to the instructions because pattern piece number eight should be your upper collar and pattern piece number seven should be your under collar. So that is a... In, uh, I'm gonna make, make this adjustment on my pattern, but once again, I wanna make that correction from what's on the pattern um, itself. It says both of them are under collars. However, it is not under collars. Pattern piece number seven is your under collar. Pattern piece number eight is your upper collar. So you should make that correction on your pattern as well, okay? So a seven, under collar, eight, upper collar. Now both of these, you need to cut one on the fold. However, pattern piece number eight, you do not need to cut interfacing of it. However, at this point, I think I might wanna cut some interfacing of that. I would just basically make sure that it's not super thiff, stiff. So I'm just going to put this aside. I'm not sure if pattern piece number eight, I wanna cut interfacing of it just yet. But that is the first mistake that I realized, okay? Pattern piece number five is your yoke back. You wanna cut one unfold of fabric. Pattern piece number 13 is your tie belt. You need to cut two of fabric. And the last pattern piece you will be cutting outside of the sleeves, which is pattern piece number 10, you're going to be cutting two of your sleeves, but you need to cut pattern piece number nine, which is your front facing. You need to cut two and interface two. However, for pattern piece number nine, you're going to cut the fabric with the pattern piece facing down on your fabric. But when you cut your interfacing, you need to have the right side of your pattern piece facing up and cut around on the interfacing, okay? Now, that's all the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this dress. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right, so let's go ahead and construct our dart in the front of our um, dress. So you need to grab pattern piece number one and move your pattern piece out of the way. And make sure you mark the wrong side of your pattern, your fabric, I should say, on both pattern pieces like I have done, and make sure you have transferred your dart as well. So what you're going to do, I'm not gonna show you how to do the dart because you, if you have watched any of my videos, you know how to do darts by now. But all you're going to do is go ahead and pinch it, and you're going to back stitch at the beginning and then sew all the way off you make sure you do not back stitch at the end of your dart so go ahead and make your dart in both front pattern pieces now all right so now that i have my dart in both the front pattern piece which you may not be able to see this really good but i'm going to try to bring it to the camera so you can see that right here so there's one dart there and then the other dart is right here okay now that you have done the darts go ahead and move your front pattern pieces out of the way and grab your back pattern piece which is pattern piece number four now what we are going to do here is you want to you cut it on the fold hopefully you did what it said and to cut on the fold okay after you cut on the fold what i want to do i'm going to mark my wrong side because i forgot to do that um, you want to open it up all right so when you open up your pattern piece you will notice that you have dots right here you should have four dots at the bottom four dots at the top okay let me bring that a little closer so you can see okay now what you want to do is grab your pattern piece and you want to match up the center fold and where your pleats are going to go and i always say grab your pattern piece make sure you have your pattern piece until you completely 
until you are completely done with that pattern piece. Do not put it up, put it back in the pattern envelope because you may need it again, okay? So what you need to do is your pleats, this, it shows that this pleat is going to be going to the side seam, to the right. So what you need to do is I'm cutting a large, so what I'm gonna do is just basically make sure that I make an arrow to signify that this line is going to pair up with this line, okay? So all I'm going to do is take these two lines right here, these two dots, and put it over to the other two dots, and then I'm just going to pin. Now, I'm going to flip my pattern piece over and do the exact same thing. So it shows me that the arrow is going to the left of me, to the other side seam. So I'm just gonna put a little line there, just to note that those two dots are going to the other side. So I'm just gonna take these two dots and match it up with the other dot. So now I just formed my pleats. I'm gonna make sure I pin there. And all you're going to do is go to your sewing machine and then baste across. Now I'm just gonna baste it at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and the longest stitch on my sewing machine. So go ahead and baste your pleats in place now. All right, so now that I have the yoke um, baste it across. The next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and grab pattern piece number five, which is your yoke back. And what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to pin your yoke back to your back. So I'm just gonna mark the wrong side. Make sure you are marking the wrong side of your pattern pieces as well so you do not get confused, okay? So with right sides together, this is my right side, I'm just going to attach my yoke back to my back. I'm going to make sure that I am matching up the notch. So you have a notch there. You're going to pin there, pin at the end. And then you have another notch here where you wanna make sure that those notches right here are matching up. And pin there. And then pin at the other end of your yoke back pin all the way across as well. So go ahead and pin across now. All right, so now that I have it pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off your seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and attached my yoke onto my back, now this is the wrong side facing up. I went ahead and finished off my seam allowance, which you could see there. And then what I did on the right side was after I pressed the seam allowance up towards the yoke, I went ahead and top stitched. Now this is a personal preference. I just wanted to give it a little bit more detail. So I top stitched right there. So you could see that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I know in the instructions, it tells you to do the pockets. I'm not doing the pockets right now. Um, because like I said before, I like to sew my side seam at the same time of me doing my sleeves. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my front to my back with right sides together. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number one, and then we're going to attach right sides together, um, our front to our back at the shoulder seams. So this is uh, the wrong side up and make sure you have the correct pattern pieces facing down, okay? Don't do like I did on my Easter dress and have the wrong ones, okay? So just make sure that you have right sides facing and you want to make sure you are matching up the notches and the dots and you're going to pin at the notch and pin all the way across. So go ahead and pin across both shoulder seams now. All right, so now that I have the shoulder seams pinned using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then sew it across both shoulder seams, and then finish off your seam allowance and press the seam towards the back of your um, garment, which is the yoke. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have sewn my front to back at the shoulder seam, and I press my seam allowance towards the back of my dress or my yoke, I also went ahead and stay stitched around my neck edge, which I stay stitched at a half an inch seam allowance. 
Um, so go ahead and stay stitch if you have not done so. Once you do that, go ahead and move your dress out of the way and grab pattern piece number eight, which is actually your upper collar, okay? And what you want to do, make sure you mark the wrong side, pattern piece eight. What you want to do, which I have not done this yet, so I'm gonna tell you and then I'm gonna do it. Um, you want, you have two dots right here. You have one here and one here. What you want to do is you want to, using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, using a regular length stitch, you want to stitch from dot to dot. So go ahead and stitch from this dot to this dot now. All right, so what I did, and I'm gonna correct uh, what I just said. So what you want to do is sew through the dot. So basically create a stitching using a regular length stitch in between um, about a half an inch on both sides of the dot, like that on both sides. And then you're going to clip through, I mean to your dot, but not through the stitching, okay? Like you see here on both sides. Then what I did was using a basting stitch, I stitched from dot to dot, okay? Now you're looking at the wrong side of mine. Now what you're, this is the right side. I just turned it over, it's the right side. The next thing you want to do is trim this piece right here, just this piece right here, down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim it down to 3 8 of an inch seam allowance now. All right, so now that I have it trimmed, all I'm going to do is press this up like this, all right? So go ahead and press this little area right here in between the two dots up now. All right, so now that I have this section right here pressed under, the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and grab pattern piece number seven, which is your under collar. This is the actual under collar, right? <laughs> All right, and then what you're going to do is right sides together. You're going to pin the upper collar, which is pattern piece number eight, to your under collar, which is pattern piece number seven, the collar that's actually interfaced, okay? So go ahead and pin that now, and just make sure that you actually have it matching up and you're matching up those notches as well, okay? So I'm gonna move this out the way. I'm gonna grab my pins and I'm going to pin at the notch on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin down and then come across the bottom and then pin back up. Leave this portion at the top Unpin. So go ahead and pin now. All right, so now that I have it pinned all the way around and I left this portion open using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're going to start, you could start at the dot. You're going to start at the dot. You probably can't see my dot over here. I'm going to start at the dot, uh, backstitch at that dot. Come all the way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, pivot, and then sew across. When I get to this corner, I'm gonna pivot again and come back up stopping at this dot. Go ahead and do that and then trim it down to 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to understitch. So go ahead and just go ahead and sew your um, upper collar to your under collar now and then trim it down. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have attached my upper collar, which is number eight, to my under collar, which is number seven, um, with right sides together, I went ahead, so go ahead and trim it down. So I went ahead and trimmed down the sides, but then decided that I was gonna do this on camera. So go ahead and trim down the seam allowance now. Now make sure you clip into your corners, but do not clip through the stitching. Now that I have done all of that, what you want to do is now turn it right side out, but I'm not going to turn mine right side out. What I'm going to do is press it. 
And I'm gonna press the seam allowance towards the under collar, which is pattern piece number seven with the interfacing. So you want to press the seam allowance towards the um, under collar, which is the one that's interface, and then you're going to under stitch on the facing, the one that's interface, which is your under collar. So once you press it, you're going to under stitch as far as you can as possible, okay? So go ahead and under stitch your under collar now. All right, so now that I have the upper and under collar with the right side out, I went ahead and under stitch like you see here on the under collar. I went ahead and pressed it. And then what I did, it says it in the instructions, however you don't need to do this. I went ahead and based across, just across this portion, leaving this undone, right? Um, I went ahead and based the cross only for the sake of holding it together, but you do not have to do that if you do not want to, okay? So now that I have done that, go ahead and grab your dress and we're going to attach our um, upper and under collar to our dress. Now, make sure you are attaching the portion that's interface to your dress, okay? I want to say that because you do not want to attach it like this. Don't do that. You want the portion that's up right here, you want that facing you. Now, you have some um, notches right here. Make sure those notches match up with the notches in your dress. So pin there. Where you see the dots, the dots matches up, these dots right here match up to your shoulder seam. So you're going to pin the dot there at your shoulder seam on both sides. Now, you may need to clip into the curve portion of your dress. I will need to do that and I will do that as well to make sure everything is laying flat. Now make sure that the seam allowance of your dress is still pressed towards the back. You still want that pressed towards the back of your dress. And I'm just gonna pin this other um, notch to the notch on my dress as well. So I'm gonna pin there. All right, make sure that you do not have anything bunched up underneath your dress any puckers or anything going on underneath your dress. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and pin in between my dress. If I need to clip any portion of my dress, I'm not gonna clip through the stitching portion that I stay stitch. You're just gonna make little clips just to give in order for your collar to fit on your dress. So go ahead and pin the rest of your collar now. All right, so now that I have my collar pinned to my um, dress, what I'm gonna do is starting at this edge right here using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna start here, back stitch, so all the way across and back stitch at the end. Make sure you do not sew this portion at all. Leave that open. So you're gonna just sew across that collar section now. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that you have the collar attached to your shirt, the next thing we're going to do, now one thing I wanna mention, do not trim this down. So if you did sew, you will definitely need to be trimming down your facing for it to match correctly. So if you trimmed it down, you're gonna have to go to pattern piece number nine and trim the top portion of it down as well, okay? So I'm sorry I have to tell you that or it'd be the mirror of bad news, but you're going to have to do that. So if uh, you trimmed it down, trim it, trim about a good three, uh, Trim your facing piece, which is pattern piece number nine, down to about three eighths of an inch seam allowance as well. All right, so I did not trim this seam allowance down because I know that I have to do a facing piece, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is move this out of the way and I'm gonna grab pattern piece number nine. All right, so now that I have pattern piece number nine, so I'm gonna show you what I did and then I'm gonna grab my dress. So what I did is I went ahead and stay stitched. So I started at the top, stay stitched all the way to that dot. 
Now I stay stitched you, uh, at a half of an inch seam allowance like it says in the instructions. Now just remember that the dot is about 5 eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance. So I just stay stitched that portion right there to the dot. I did not stay stitched all the way down to the bottom edge. I did not do that. All right. Did that on both sides. After I did that, I went ahead and finished off the inner section of my facing. Now this is the piece that's going to be on the inside. This is this curved piece. So you want to go ahead and finish off the curved piece of your facing piece, okay? After you do that, you can go ahead and finish off the upper portion of your facing because you will be attaching that and then you can finish this off last. Now, I went ahead and finished mine off already. However, I will be uh, finishing it off again when I attach it to my dress, okay? So now, once you do all of that, go ahead and grab your dress and I'm just gonna show you with one facing piece. And what you're gonna do is with right sides together, now just make sure that you know that your side seams are not sewn yet, okay? So what you're gonna do is with right sides together, make sure you have the right one, okay? Right facing. So with right sides together, I'm going to turn my dress to where you could see it. And this is my facing piece. And with right sides together, I'm going to pin my facing to my dress. Now make sure your collar section is facing down, okay? You do not wanna pin it this way. You want to pin it just like this to where it will match up with the notches as well. So you're going to pin the facing, basically you're sandwiching the collar in between your dress and your facing. So have the collar down just like you see it right here. Place your facing on top of your collar. Pin at that notch right there. Make sure that this, what's going to happen is this piece right here, when you turn it to the inside, this top piece is going to pair up with your shoulder seam, okay? So just make sure that you have everything pinned all the way around except for this little piece where the dot is, okay? So you just want to make sure that that is all matching up across your neck edge, okay? So just pin the dot, the, make sure that the dot match up with this dot right here, all right? And then you're going to pin across the neck edge and down the front of your facing. So go ahead and pin now. All right, so now that I have my facing pinned onto my dress, um, what I'm going to do is starting at this dot right here using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning, come all the way across to uh, this dot, stitch that dot, and then still making sure that I am um, lined up with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew all the way down the front portion of my facing and back stitch at the end when I get to the hem. All right, so go ahead and do that now and then press your seam allowance towards your facing and then we'll go ahead and understitch. Now it does not say this in the instructions to understitch your facing. However, if you do not want it to be flapping up every time you wear it, I would suggest understitching, but it is a personal preference, okay? So go ahead and sew your facing piece and then press your seam towards your facing and press it down. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have went ahead and attached my facing onto my dress, I also did what I told you I was gonna do is understitch. So I went ahead and understitched the facing. So basically I stitched about a fourth of an inch from the seam allowance on the facing. So I just made sure that I pressed my seams towards the facing and then understitched on the facing, okay? Now, I know what you're looking at is probably this little flap up here. This flap up here needs to attach to the shoulder seam allowance. Now, before you do that, what you want to do is clip right here. Do not clip through your stitching because what's going to happen is this portion right here is going to be pressed up towards your collar and then this part's going to go over your collar just like this, okay? And this part's going to attach to your shoulder like this. So all your edges are completely finished, okay? 
So the first thing I'm going to do is take my facing and I'm going to attach, that's why I said go ahead and finish off the seam allowance to the top portion of your facing. You're going to attach your facing to your shoulder seam. Now you can hand stitch this if you would like, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin it and I'm going to just sew about a fourth of an inch seam allowance and tack it that way versus hand sewing. You guys know I'm not a big fan of a whole bunch of hand sewing. So if I don't have to, I will not hand sew, okay? So I'm gonna do that one and then I'm just going to go ahead and do this one the same way. Now what I'm going, going to do is go ahead and clip right here to where I don't have a lot of bulk going on in my seam allowance, okay? So I'm just gonna clip right here you do not want to clip the collar, okay? So just pin this down like this. Now you're only pinning the shoulder seam, so do not pin through your dress, just your shoulder seam. So I'm just gonna pin. And I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and I'm going to just tack this down about a fourth of an inch. Now after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and press the collar seam allowance up and then attach it this way. Now, before I go ahead and uh, stitch, now I'm gonna stitch on the right side. So I'm gonna put some pins and stitch right here, stitching in the ditch. However, you can hand sew this as well. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna get a label and I'm gonna go ahead and attach a label to the collar section of my dress. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin it on one layer, just this layer. So I'm gonna pin it in the center. So I'm gonna find the center of my dress where my collar is, so it's about right here. And I'm going to pin. And I'm going to attach my label to the inside of my dress and then go ahead and press it up, fold it in and stitch that on. Now, I'm just gonna make sure I'm stitching on one layer and then I'm going to attach this bottom portion, okay? So go ahead and do all of that now. All right, so now that I went ahead and attached my facing to my shoulder seams on both sides, I went ahead and finished off the collar portion. So the next thing, and it's looking good, of course, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and attach our pockets to the side seams. Now. What I have decided to do is take the sleeve, the top portion of the sleeve for this dress, which will be this portion, I'm gonna use that for this dress. However, I'm going to take the um, puff sleeve and the cuff from this pattern and attach it to that sleeve. So I'm gonna be doing that in this tutorial. However, if you just want the short sleeve, you can follow along with the instructions. I'm gonna get the instructions for you. It's pretty much if any, if you have done sleeves before, you can follow those instructions, but it's uh, number 33, 34, 35, 36. So 33 through, look like 36 is the instructions for the sleeve. You would just follow along with short sleeves or however you wanna do your sleeve. All right, now in this tutorial, we will be doing the sleeves for the puff sleeves and the cuffs to this pattern, okay? Now that I mentioned that, let's go ahead and sew our pockets. Now I'm not gonna walk you through how to sew on the pockets because this is in almost every single tutorial you know, on how to attach pockets. So basically what you're gonna do is attach two pockets to the front, two pockets to the back. Now I'm going to get two pockets for the back and all I'm gonna do is I have a dot and a notch. I'm going to place the pockets right sides together, right sides together, and attach, there's a dot right here. So the top part of my pockets goes right here and then you want to match the notch up there. And then you're just going to pin. You're gonna pin your pockets to both the front and the back now. All right, so now that I have my pockets attached to the front and the back using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end, 
and finish off your seam allowance about an inch above and below your pocket. Also, press the seam towards the pocket and you will only be understitching the front pockets only. Do not understitch on the back pockets. Go ahead and do all of that now. All right, so now that I have the pockets attached to my um, dress, the next thing you're gonna do is go ahead and pin at your side seam. So I pin from the hem all the way up, but you have two dots right here. So you want to make sure not to pin or sew in between the dots because you need to leave an opening for your pockets. So what you're going to do is pin from the hem to this dot and then from the dot all the way up to your underarm seam, right? And then pin around your pocket. After you do that, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, and then come up to this dot, back stitch there, break your thread, start at this dot, back stitch at this dot, and then sew all the way up and back stitch at the end. After you sew your side seam, go ahead and sew around your pocket. Once you do that, go ahead and finish off your pocket and your side seam, making sure you clip the back seam allowance for uh, the bottom and the top of your pockets. So go ahead and do all of that now. All right, so now that I have sewn the side seam and the pockets together to my um, shirt dress, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and finish off your facing, turning it to the wrong side. So basically, I did one side and it's going to look like this. So we're gonna do the other side. So what you wanna do, is you're looking at the right side of my shirt dress is facing up and you're going to take your facing and flip it over onto itself so here's your facing you're just going to flip it over to where it looks like this now i went ahead and marked up one and one fourth or one and a quarter with my ruler i marked that up and what i'm going to do is go ahead and pin and then I'm just gonna sew across right here. So where the serger thread is, from there across. Once I do that, I'm gonna trim it down, leaving a little peak and turn it right side out, poking out my corner. Once you do that, go ahead and stitch your hem in place. Your hem is one and one fourth. So all I did was went ahead and finish off the bottom and I'm just going to press it and stitch it in place right there, okay? I'll do that at the very end of completing the entire dress because I wanna try it on and make sure one and one fourth is not too short, okay? Now, I already tried mine's on, which is why I already did the other side, and one and one fourth is perfect for me, but I will finish off my hem last. I'll just go ahead and do that facing piece now. Once I do all of that, I'm gonna move my shirt dress off to the side. So go ahead and move your shirt dress off to the side. After you have done your facing, what we're going to do is go ahead and construct our tie belt and our belt loops before we do our sleeves, okay? The sleeves is the last thing we're going to do because once you do your sleeves, you will be all done, all right? Now, if you want belt loops, create a one piece of fabric. Create the, well, or self-draft the belt loops. Now, lengthwise is six inches and then one and a half inch up and down. So six inches across, one and a half inches up and down to create this rectangle, okay? Now, what you're gonna do for your belt loops is you're going to press this in half. Now, I have already done this, but I'm just gonna show you on camera. You press it in half. Once you press it in half, you are going to press to that seam. So you're gonna press it on both sides so it will look like this. Once you press that, you're going to fold it in half and now you have something that looks like this. What you're going to do is go ahead and stitch close to this press edge right here for your belt loops. Once you stitch, you're going to fold it in half and cut it in half, and that way you have two belt loops to put on both sides seams of your dress. You do not have to do this. This is a personal preference if you are doing your tie belt. I like to do this instead of just hang my 
tie belt over my dress. So this is why I am doing a belt loop, okay? So I'll go ahead and stitch that in place while I am stitching my tie belt. Now for your tie belt, I'm not gonna walk you through every single step of the tie belt because I have tutorials on my channel on how to create a tie belt. It is no different than any of the tie belts you have seen thus far, okay? So what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to go ahead and um, pin at your notch and then at the top and the bottom. Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and then you're going to trim your seams down and press your seams open. Once you do that, you're gonna have something that looks like this. I'm gonna open it. It's going to look like a long strip of fabric like this. With right sides together and the seams pressed open, you are going to pin right sides together. Leaving about a good inch and a half opening at the center, you're going to pin all the way around and sew using three eighths, of, I believe it's five eighths of an inch seam allowance for the um, tie belt. Let me grab the pattern piece for you. So it doesn't say three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so it's five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning, so all the way down, one seam, back up, and then making sure that you leave a good inch and a half opening. Trim it down and then turn it right side out and give it a press, okay? So that's what you're going to do for your tie belt, all right? So go ahead and do your tie belt and your belt loops and then we'll construct the sleeve. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so let's go ahead and do the sleeves from McCall 7838. That's the pattern right here. So we are doing the sleeves to view C. However, the top portion is actually from McCall's 8031, the actual pattern. I'll tell you what I did here shortly. So. If you have this pattern, you will need to cut out pattern piece number 10 and 11. Now, if you wanna do the entire sleeve, you will need nine, 10, and 11 from this pattern. Cut according to your sides. For me, I cut a size 16 for the sleeve from McCall 7838. All right, so now let's talk about the top portion of my sleeve, which is pattern piece number 10 from the original pattern for the shirt dress, which is McCall's 8031. Now, I trace the short sleeves of this pattern. Now, from the bottom up, I did one and five eighths. Reason being is because pattern piece number nine is nine inches from the top to the bottom. So this was a little longer than what I wanted. So what I did was measure from the sleeve cap down nine inches and made that line, which means I have to remove one and five eighths of an inch. That's why this line says short sleeve and this line says puff sleeve line, all right? So I just folded it up and cut it out, all right? That's pattern piece number 10 for simple, I'm sorry, for McCall's 8031. Now you can use the sleeve from the actual pattern McCall 7838 if you choose to. You will also need pattern piece number 10, the lower sleeve, you need to cut two out of that pattern. And then for your cuff, you need to cut four, which is pattern piece 11, you need to cut four and interface two. All right, that's all you need for the sleeve. So now one thing, I'm not gonna walk you through every single step. I like to do a lot of steps in batches to where I'm not running back and forth to the sewing machine. So the first thing you want to do is the top portion, I'm gonna call this the upper sleeve, the lower sleeve, and the cuff, okay? So for the upper sleeve, which is this portion right here, you need to create gathering stitches for the sleeve cap. Now, I created the first stitch at a half, using a basting stitch, a half an inch, and then three eighths of an inch. Then that way I don't have to unpick once I sew using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? After you do that, go ahead and finish off the side seams of your uh, upper sleeve, okay? I did that with my serger because these seams are going to be pressed open, okay? I don't wanna do it after I sew it together. I wanted to do it before I sewed it together, okay? So that's the first thing that I did. Now moving on to the lower sleeve, what I did was went ahead and gathered the upper portion, the top port, 
portion of this lower sleeve as well as gather the lower portion right here of the lower sleeve. I did the, that same thing. The first stitch is at a half an inch. The second stitch as, is at three eighths of an inch. Then I went ahead and finished off my side seams for both sides, okay? Now, you can do what I'm gonna do at the same time as well. Then that way it cuts down with how many times you're running back and forth to the sewing machine. And you get, it's basically, it's not batch sewing, it's basically being productive with sewing. So that's why I sew many steps at a time to where I'm not running back and forth to the sewing machine, okay? So a couple of things that you can do to cut down on that is first thing with right sides together, you're going to sew your underarm seam of your upper sleeve. So with right sides together, you're gonna pin at the notch. All right, so just pin both of your underarm seams together and make sure you have right sides together instead of wrong sides together. That's why I make sure I put numbers or X's on the wrong side of my um, fabrics, especially when they look the same on both sides. All right, so I have the underarm seam pin of the upper sleeve. I'm gonna move that out of the way. So because I'm gonna sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end when I sew those together. Now for the lower sleeve with right sides together, you're going, going to sew the side seam here as well. But on this one, you're gonna sew from the top all the way to the dot. So you have a dot right here, if you can see that. You have a dot. You're going to stop at that dot, okay? So make sure you pin to that dot and stop there, all right? So I'm gonna pin that dot. And then I'm going to pin the length of the sleeve. So go ahead and pin now, making sure you match up your notch as well. All right, so now that I have the underarm seams uh, sewn together of my upper sleeve and my lower sleeve, I'm gonna move this out of the way. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and start constructing my cuffs. So what I'm going to do is you should have four, you should have two that are interface and two that are not interface. And what you're going to do is take one interface to one non-interface right sides together, and then you're going to sew your uh, side seams. All right, so I'm gonna put this one on top of this one. And then make sure that you pin down. So you're going to sew down both sides and across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Go ahead and sew those side seams now. All right, so now that I have the cuffs sewn together and I trimmed it down, I turned it right side out and give it a press. The next thing you want to do is attach your cuff to the lower portion of your sleeves. So um, the lower portion, go ahead and gather if you have not done so already. And what you're going to do is have your lower sleeve, which is this portion, wrong side out, okay? And then you're going to slip that into your cuffs, or not slip it into, but you're going to match up the notch. So there is a notch at the very bottom of your um, lower sleeve. You need to play around and find your notch like I am doing. All right. And then you, there's a notch right here on your sleeve. You're just going to make sure you match that up and pin all the way around. If you need to adjust your gathers, you can do so now as well. So pin all the way around. I'm not gonna do this. I'm just showing you guys this. Pin all the way around. You're only going to pin this portion to your sleeve. Once you do that, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, which is where your dot is, and then back stitch at the end. Once you do that, trim down your seam allowance and press your seam towards your cuff. Go ahead and do that now. 
All right, so now that I have my cuffs sewn onto my sleeve, now I do wanna say one thing is if you attach your cuff wrong side of sleeve to right side of cuff, your cuff is going to be wrong. So I don't know if you see me flip my sleeve right side out and then attach my cuffs. I'm not sure if you've seen that, but you need to attach your cuff with right sides together and then stitch it, okay? So it'll look like this versus the outside, you know, showing, okay? Now, after I stitched my cuff to my sleeve, your cuff shit looks like this. Now you have two options. You could slip stitch, which you guys know I'm not going to be slip stitching mine. I'm just going to pin on the right side like this. I'm gonna make sure that this finished edge is a little past that stitching line. And I'm going to pin on the right side of my um, cuffs. And then I'm just going to attach it that way. Okay, so I'm just gonna Place some pins there to attach my cuffs when I go back to the sewing machine, okay? Now you could do this all the way around your cuff. So go ahead and do that now if you are going to be um, doing it by machine versus hand stitching. All right, so I have my cuff pinned in place. I'm going to attach that right at the sewing machine once I attach my upper sleeve to my lower sleeve, okay? So go ahead and grab your upper sleeve, which is this portion right here, and then make sure you turn it right sides out, okay? Your <laughs> wrong side needs to be on the inside, and what you're going to do is go ahead and gather the upper portion of your lower sleeve. And then what you're going to do is with right sides together, you're going to slip your lower sleeve inside of your upper sleeve, making sure you um, match up the uh, seam allowance to your um, upper sleeve, okay? So with right side, so I have this wrong side out. So my upper sleeve is wrong side out, I'm slipping right side out, the lower sleeve inside to where it's right sides together. And then what I'm going to do is make sure my underarm seams are uh, correct. So it should face this way, okay? So make sure that the circle portion of your sleeve is facing the gathered portion of your sleeve. And then you want to pin the underarm seams. All right, now don't poke yourself like I just did. So I'm gonna pin there. There is a notch on your lower sleeve. So you wanna make sure that you match up that notch as well. And then you're just gonna basically pull up gathers if you need to, and make sure that you, make, make sure that you uh, pin all the way around, adjusting your gathers to your upper sleeve pinned onto your lower sleeve. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my upper sleeve attached to my lower sleeve, starting at the underarm seam, using um, five eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and sew all the way around your sleeve. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the upper sleeve attached to the lower sleeves. I went ahead and finished off the seam allowance on the inside as well. I went ahead and stitched my cuffs in place on my sewing machine. I went ahead and made my buttons on my cuffs as well. So all of that stuff you could do at the sewing machine so you don't have to go back and forth, okay? So now the only thing left for you to do is attach your upper sleeve to your dress. So grab your dress and make sure you have the correct sleeve. So you want to create, well, if you have not done so already, create your gathering stitches, and then you want to pull up your gathers, okay? So just make sure that you pulling up your gathers all the way around just to create some ease, basically. Not necessarily gathers, but just basically ease to where you can ease your sleeve into your arm thigh or armhole area of your dress. Now that I have it kind of pulled up, some of the gathers 
or you know pulled up some ease now what I'm going to do is have my dress this is the armhole and what I'm looking at is the um, wrong sides I'm, I'm sorry right sides together and you want to see where this is uh, double notches so that goes to the back this is my double notch so I have the right sleeve for the right armhole and I'm gonna make sure that the seam allowance of my dress is facing towards the back of my um, garment and then I'm going to pin the underarm seam and pin all the way around so go ahead and do that now all right so now that I have the bottom portion pin there is a dot on my sleeve and on the top portion of my dress. I'm going to make sure I match those two dots up at the very top and pin there. And then I'm just gonna pin the rest of my dress all the way around. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my sleeve pinned to my armhole, I'm gonna start at the underarm seam using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way around your sleeve and back stitch at the end. Once you do that, go ahead and finish off your seam allowance and you are all done with your dress. All right, so I have my sleeve completely done. This is what it looks like, right? And this is the cuff at the bottom. I just need to add on my buttons right here on the cuffs, which I will do here shortly. Now, after you attach your sleeve, there's one last thing you have to do in order to be completely done with your um, dress. Now, you will need to add your button holes to your dress, okay? So basically grab pattern piece number 12 of McCall's 8031, and what you're going to do is basically line it up just like this, like you have your facing. You're gonna line it up, and then just make sure you make your button hole markings. So I would just make my button hole markings all the way down the length of my uh, right front so make sure that you are adding the buttonholes to the right so your pattern piece number 12 needs to be facing right side up then you know you are attack you are marking your buttonholes on the right side so basically it's the right front all the rest of the fabric should be to the left of you and then make your buttonholes once you do that then you are all done do not stop at just the sleeves because you do need to make your buttonholes in this dress all right that's all that i have for you in this tutorial i hope you enjoyed and don't forget to hit that like button as well i take i'll see you in the next video all right, so there you have it. That is the entire pattern review and the sew along. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing.